Today I'm going to show you how to take your single cell analysis up a notch without needing any complex code. I'm going to show you two things. First, how to use a tool called BitFam to infer transcription factor activity in single cells. And then I will use a random forest machine learning classifier to extract the most important transcription factors from a subset of cells. I know this sounds like a lot, but it's actually going to be very simple and it will add a lot to your single cell analysis. BitFam was recently published in Genome Research. It uses prior ChIP-seq knowledge to identify transcription factor target genes and transcription factor activity in individual cells. I will be using data from cultured cells that were infected with Zika because I want to see the transcription factors that are activated in the Zika infected cells. But you could do this on any subpopulations of cells that you are interested in. In all, we're only going to be writing about four lines of code in R and just a handful of lines in Python. But you could do everything in R if you wanted. The BitFam GitHub actually has code for running the random forest in R, but I find it so much easier to do in Python. Okay, so to get started, we need to install three different packages, which are all listed on the BitFam GitHub page. We need to install rstan, surat, and then finally, BitFam. All right, so I'm actually going to do this in an R script because I think it's the simplest way to do it. But doing it in R Studio is fine. So like I mentioned, this is really only going to be a few lines of code. We just need to load Surat and BitFam. Then we just need to load in the matrix. So we're going to use the raw cell ranger output. So we're just going to make an object called matrix and we're going to use the read an x function from Surat. That's why we're loading in Surat. And then we just need to pass the path to the filtered feature barcode matrix folder. So your data doesn't need to be from Cell Ranger. All you need is a matrix where the row names are genes and the column names are cells, which is the default layout when you use this function. Next, we're just going to use the bitfam preprocessing function on the matrix. So this just scales the raw data. And then we're just going to make a new object called results. And this is when we call the bitfam function. Our data is the matrix. Our species is human. If you had mouse, you would put mouse here instead. We're not using a single cell attack seek object, so we're going to set single cell attack object to NA. And then we can try to make this a little faster by passing in cores. And then we'll extract the Z matrix, which is actually the matrix of the transcription factor activities, which is BitFam activities, and then from the results object. And then finally, we just have to save this. So we're just going to do a write table. We're going to write the Z object to a file named BitFam out.csv and we have to specify the separator which is a comma all right so i saved that script as run bitfam.r so to run this we're just going to do r script and then vanilla and then run bitfam.r oops so it looks like i just forgot to capitalize the x so i'm just going to change that and try again Okay, so it's running now. The one downside to BitFam is it's a little slow. So don't expect to do this and have it done in a couple of minutes. It's much better to set it up and then walk away for a couple hours or maybe do it overnight. So if you're doing it on a remote server, I recommend doing it through Tmux or submitting it as a job if you can do that. But it should run for a couple hours and then in the end, we'll have a CSV of transcription factor activity. All right, so when it's done, you should see something like this. It did take over eight hours, but again, like I said, just queue it up overnight and check on it the next day. 
Sometimes it's faster if it finds the local minimum quicker, but don't count on that. But two important points. One, my 10,000 cells took about 56 gigs of memory. I've run more cells before and I've never had trouble with using a 64 gig server, but just keep that in mind. And sometimes I've had it where the elbow doesn't converge in the end and it'll give you a warning. But I found that as long as this number is relatively low, like below 0 0.01, and if you do a double checking of your transcription factors and known subpopulations, if they make sense, then I wouldn't worry that the elbow doesn't converge. This is what the CSV output looks like. It looks like when I opened it up in LibreOffice Calc, the columns got shifted to the left one. Um, I'm just going to double check later that hand one is actually the first column, but we have columns of genes and then rows of cells and then the inferred transcription factor activity. Okay, so I've done all my pre-processing in Python using ScanP. If you want to learn how to do this, I do have another video, but it's not required. You don't need to do any pre-processing or clustering if you already have labels based on your cell ID. Or if you did this in something like Surat and R, but still wanted to do the random forest in Python, what you can do is just save the metadata from the Surat object as a CSV and open it up where I'll show you in a little bit. And again, I'm interested in the Zika positive cells, specifically the ones in the 95th quantile and above. So the most infected cells, I really won't go into this. It's not really important for this tutorial. As you can see here in this UMAP, the yellow cells are the ones that I've labeled with one. And then the dark purple are the ones I labeled with zero. And then I'll show you just quickly an example of what you might do in one of your analyses. Let's say you wanted to label a given cluster one and the rest of the cells zero. Here's just a simple little function. If the past value is equal to the cluster you're interested in, I return one. If it's not, then it returns zero. And then I just added this as another column in the adata.observation data frame. And so here you see this is the one I wanted to do for my analysis, the Zika Q95. You see we have a bunch of zeros and then the ones for the highly infected Zika cells. And then the C label is going to be zero for all the clusters except for four. And like I said earlier, if you did your analysis in Surat, you can just open it up here as a CSV from the metadata. But we're going to be using this adata.obs data frame, which is equivalent to the Surat metadata. So let's open our bitfam CSV. And we're just going to use pandas. I imported it earlier, but I'll just show you again. So we're just going to do a pd read CSV. And then we're just going to pass the path to your CSV. So let's double check the column wasn't messed up. Okay, see it's not, it was just specific to that OBS or that LibreOffice calc software. We did some pre-processing, so we filtered out some cells that had low counts or high mitochondrial reads. So in my A data, I have 7,918 cells, but in the Z object, there are 8,685. We first need to filter out all the cells from this data frame that aren't in the A data. So we'll just do a simple pandas filtering. So I'm only keeping the cells that were also in the A data object. Now we just want to make a NumPy array that is 0 or 1 based on this label. And we're going to get that from actually the obs. So we're just going to make a dictionary of the index, and then the value is gonna be this. So let's just call it L dictionary, and it's just gonna be a dict of a zip. Let's look. And we want the index, and then Zika Q95. And now we can use this dictionary to map against the index series, not ADA dot obs, but of z, and that'll be our y data in our machine learning. So it's just going to be z dot index dot map. So now if we look at y, it's just the series of numbers. And now we'll just import the modules we need from sklearn. 
So you'll have to install sklearn if you don't have it already. And then we'll just make a new model, which is a random force classifier. And then we'll tell it to fit Z. We'll just pass the whole data frame and then the Y we just made, which is the zeros and the ones. So it shouldn't take too long. Yeah, it only took like 10 seconds. And now we can select the feature importance from the model. So if we do a select or SEL dot feature importance, you see it's just an array of importances that correspond to the columns in Z. So we can make this a data frame and then set the columns or the index as Z columns. And now we have the importance for each transcription factor for our cells of interest. And then we can sort them too. So sort values. Um, by column zero. All right, so now we have this ordered list of transcription factors. The zinc finger seems to be the most important in the infected cells, and then so on. These aren't the highest expressed transcription factors in those cells. These are just the most important given our labeling. So which transcription factors differentiated these labeled cells from the unlabeled cells. So like I mentioned, it really only took a few lines of code, both in R and in Python here, to get the most important transcription factors from any given subset of cells. Of course, you can do more with this, make heat maps, you can make Disney plots based on transcription factor activity, do other analyses, but for this short video, I don't wanna to go too in depth. This should be enough to get you started.